Hey guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK, uh, coming to you from Dayton Hamvention this year, 2024, and I'm here with Steven, and guys, you have got to see this. You know how big of a fan I am of APRS. We'll wait until you see this setup. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. So I'm here with Steven, W88. LMF. Steven, good morning. How are you, sir? Fine. All right. So tell us a little this bit of, my, about what you got going on here. This is my traveling radio site, Studio B, which is a combination mobile ham shack, micro emergency operations center, radio test lab, and AM FM broadcast station. Over here is a display for multiple devices here in the trailer. You're seeing a Geocon world clock. These are the extended desktops of these two laptops. And the fourth panel is a live video feed from my drone when it's in the air. Over here, I've got uh, a broadcast gear. That's an F uh, AM transmitter and a FM transmitter. The broadcast audio console is virtual. It's an application on one of these computers. So I get a full broadcast audio mixer as one of my programs and then route it into the transmitters. Then I can tune it in off the air with this Carver AM stereo tuner and monitor what's going out. I can look at the modulation here on the IFR's scope. Over here, this is a remote rig, remote control system, which is listening to my home station, a Kenwood TS-2000 that's located in East Lansing in central Michigan. It's going out over the internet connection here in the trailer provided by the iPhone 6S Plus that's tethered to this mini router. And this gives me home style internet with both uh, Wi-Fi and Ethernet. This thing is actually connected by Ethernet to the router and then out over the phone on uh, T-Mobile cellular data. At the same time, that's also providing connectivity to the Apper's internet system for these laptops. And uh, the HF rig that I'll be using for today's uh, Vera experiments is this transceiver here, a FT. 857. Fantastic radio. I've got a couple of those. One in my Jeep and one at home. Yeah, I've got three or four of them. <laughs> there are two of them that run 24-7 at home, serving as eye gates on 30 meters and 60 meters now. Oh, nice. 60 meters channel 5. There's details about this on my website. If you go to wa8lmf.net slash map, You'll get a gateway page to the mapping displays for a five appers servers on different bands and modes. Now tell me a little bit more about what you've got going on on the screens here as far as APRS is concerned. Yeah. Well, over here in the lower right corner, this display is a 55-inch 4K TV being used as a monitor wall. I'm using an HDMI splitter to combine four separate video sources into one. So what I've got out of this 55 inch TV is a, essentially a monitor wall of four 27 inch 1080 monitors. And I can either just split the screen like this and show all four, or I can put one of these things. I'll take the Apper's map here of the Hamvention website and toggle that to fill, there we are, filling the whole screen. This is Apper's activity here at the Hamvention being monitored off the air by this radio here. This is a Chinese knockoff of the ASU 8900 quadbander, uh, HYS TC9900. It's the only Chinese radio that has the standard six pin mini din data port for uh, data applications. Oh, that's good to know. Unfortunately, they're not available in the US. You've got to buy them from the factory <laughs> through Alibaba, which is China's equivalent of Amazon. Right, right. But that's how I bought them. Uh, just like buying something off Amazon. 
Okay, well now I noticed some of these icons are in blue. What's why? Why are some in blue and some in white? The the white ones are actual signals directly from the user in question. The blue ones are cyan, actually, are uh, so-called appers objects, meaning that you're transmitting the location of something other than yourself. Okay. If you looked at the detail behind these, you'd see that it shows that it was originated by WA8LMF, but it's not me as WA8LMF. And I've been transmitting these objects, which will show up on the appers radios of anybody approaching the ham engine so that they can see, for example, where the entrance is and where the flea market is and of course over here where I am, the Emergency Communications Vehicles Expo. Uh, so basically information that you're giving out that anybody running an APRS radio can pick up and, right. and get this information. They, or if they view the Appers internet system uh, on their phone, for example. Uh, directly off the internet because all this stuff is winding up on the internet and you wouldn't necessarily have to have a radio but just a, a phone with a appers mapping app on it okay uh, so that's one of my four screens is this this display itself is actually a Google satellite map that I captured and then calibrated as a UIU map so that it aligns properly and you can see I'm actually running UI view it's full screen at the moment but it's the cut you can see data coming in here off the air uh, with a classic uh, UI view application which despite the fact that it's been a software orphan now for uh, over a decade is still the most fully featured and most functional and versatile appers client that there is. Thing has an RV style electrical system in it though. There's a 30 amp 110 volt circuit wrapped around here and a 12 volt DC system. It did come with a 35 amp AC to DC power converter so that I've essentially got built in the equivalent of one of these big honking Astron 30 amp power supplies. Oh nice! That came from the factory that way. Then I beefed it up with two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are under this bunk. And they're float charged by the power supply. Right now I'm on grid power here at the Hamvention, but I can run this thing for days off the battery plant. In addition, I've got these solar panels, which I can unfold on the back which will give me about 130 watts of power when they're unfolded. I've got power pole outlets everywhere in here. There's one back there. And then I've got these wall mounted power pole outlets that are just like AC utilities. Okay. There's another one on this side. Boy, you are decked out with power poles then. Oh, yeah, I've gone through at least uh, 50 sets in building this thing. <laughs> They're absolutely everywhere. Then this trailer is connected to the 12 volt power system of the car through a pair of the, the big 75 amp monster power poles. And there's a third lithium battery in the trunk of the car. When the two vehicles are connected together, I have 300 amp hours of these batteries in parallel. They can either be charged by idling the car engine or when I'm in transit, when I brake camp and head out on the road, all this stuff will be charged both in the car and here in the trailer from the car's electrical system. Then when I'm at rest like this and I've got grid power coming into the trailer, the RV power hookup, then it's charging both the batteries here and the one in the car and if I put the solar panels on the back again the panels will be charging all three batteries so I've got three-way power you have uh, really thought this thing out yeah we have two antennas here connected in parallel for uh, HF appers APRS 
This is a 30 meter dipole made out of a MFJ dipole mount for ham sticks and a pair of Quicksilver radio 60 meter quick sticks. In turn, I've got an RF choke on here to balance the dipole perfectly. In turn, it's connected in parallel with the MFJ mag loop up above. The two are on the same transmission line and let me switch instantly from 60 meters to 30 meters without having to retune anything. Just flip the channel on the, the memory channel on the radio. Because each one of these antennas is extremely narrow band and at any frequency except the one that it's tuned to, it's essentially an infinite impedance. So whichever band I'm on, one of these antennas works and the other one is just totally ignored. Over here, this is a tunable antenna for the AM broadcast band, which connects to my little low power AM stereo broadcast transmitter. The product was originally made by a company called Talking House, intended to be an AM transmitter for real estate agents to put in houses for sale and you could listen to the sales spiel from your car radio out on the street. Uh, normally the antenna was on the transmitter inside the house, but this thing was an option that they sold as the range extender and this will get out a half or three quarters of a mile with a, a legal no license 100 milliwatt AM transmitter. And you can actually tune it with this slider. There's a, essentially an antenna tuner in the thing. You just put the transmitter on and tune for maximum smoke on the signal meter. <laughs> That's the back end of the trailer. Over here on the front, this is the so-called kite loop, which is a all frequency HF antenna, three to 30 megs continuously, tuned by this SGC tuner. This 70 feet of wire in this loop is very tuner friendly. It does not create an infinite impedance at some frequencies like some random wires do. The thing was originally published in uh, 1999 in QST as build the kite loop and this is the original version of it. The guy made it really massively out of irrigation piping that had to have guy wires and, and uh, heavy duty setup. This is made out of a telescoping fiberglass spider beam mast, which can be put up in about 10 minutes. Up there above, I have spreaders made out of PVC piping holding the wire out to each side. And then at the very top of it, above the loop, there's a diamond 770 dual band 2 meter 450 mobile whip, which is a very special whip because it's an NFED half wave design and it does not need a ground plane or radials under it. You can just stick it up in the air and it works perfectly, which is why I use them on all these projects. Then at the center line of the trailer, Two more antennas. The one in the back is another Diamond 770. The front one is the special Diamond quad band that was meant for the Yesu 8900. It covers 10 meters, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 450. That's a heck of an antenna then right there. Yeah. On UHF and 2 meters, it's not quite as good as the diamond on the back, the 770, but it does add the two additional bands and does work pretty decently on both six and ten meters. The problem is I didn't have a really extensive ground plane to put under it, which it really needs, like the body of a car, to uh, work properly. Stephen, thank you for your time this morning yeah. and giving us a walk around of Studio yeah. B. Right. <laughs> And guys, that's a wrap here from Studio B with Stephen. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.